news on terror segment tonight. A mosque in San Diego has been found to have suspicious ties to the terror group Hamas. The Islamic Center of San Diego is owned by the North American Islamic Trust, which is the Muslim Brotherhood's bank. Hamas, of course, is the Palestinian arm of the Muslim Brotherhood. And now the Council on American Islamic Relations is trying to stop the man who is warning the public about this mosque's ties to radical Islam. With me now, former FBI special agent and founder of Understanding the Threat, John Guandolo, and vice president of Understanding the Threat, Chris Gobbitz. Chris, John, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having us. Glad to be on. This is quite the story that you guys have got going on right now. I want to start, first of all, with this mosque in San Diego. Tell me about how you found this tie between uh, uh, an Islamic mosque and the Muslim Brotherhood. Well, it's actually not that uh, difficult. We actually train law enforcement. We're the only ones understanding the threat is the only organization training citizens and law enforcement and others how to actually identify and map out the jihadi network at, in the local uh, community. And in this case, we're talking about San Diego. So when you look at properties in San Diego uh, owned by the North American Islamic Trust, the Islamic Center of San Diego is, is one. And Nate, North American Islamic Trust, is not only identified as a Muslim Brotherhood organization by the U.S. government in the largest terrorism financing trial in U.S. history, the U.S. versus Holy Land Foundation, which was adjudicated in uh, Northern District of Texas in 2008, but it actually was identified as a mechanism to fund uh, Hamas. In other words, monies went directly from Nate's bank account to Hamas leaders and Hamas organizations overseas, and that's who owns the Islamic Center of San Diego. Right, and it, it's incredible and it's horrifying to think about that, especially given our close proximity to this. Chris, talk to me about your experiences. You re are just published a book, Muslim Mafia, detailing uh, your exploits, I guess we'll call them, undercover uh, infiltrating this, I guess, money trail between these Islamic centers and radical Islamist organizations. What did you see? Well, first off, when I, when I did my conversion to go undercover, I did a fake conversion to Islam as part of this undercover project. And I did this in a mosque in Northern Virginia called Dar al-Hijra, which was also owned by the North American Islamic Trust. And the imam that was there prior to me converting or doing the fake conversion was a man by the name of Anwar al -Aki. So again, these ties that we're seeing, this network between the Muslim Brotherhood, CARE, which is the Hamas organization that I went undercover with, and also the North American Islamic Trust, which we see right here in San Diego, they're all tied into this network. And this is a subversive network of jihadi organizations. Some of them, uh, they promote physical jihad. Some of them, they co we call them suit-wearing jihadis, where they actually work with law enforcement, they work with legislators, mayors, city councils, even uh, school districts like we're seeing here in San Diego. So this is an organization, the Muslim Brotherhood, and specifically Hamas here in the United States, that is working at all levels of society to do what they call civilization jihad, to destroy our civilization from within. Right, and John, that's where I wanted to turn to you. I mean, I recognized that term as soon as Chris started talking, this idea of civilization jihad. It's not just suicide bombers. It's not just establishing the caliphate in a violent way. When we're talking about civilization jihad, when we're talking about uh, this organization, the largest, or the uh, a co an unindicted co-conspirator in the largest terror funding prosecution in our nation's history, this is the Council on American Islamic Relations. What is their goal? What do they hope to accomplish? Well, first, we have to understand that the evidence in the HLF trial, again, the largest terrorism financing trial ever successfully prosecuted in American history, reveals that CARE is not only an unindicted co-conspirator in that case, which means there is enough evidence to indict them, but they were identified by the U.S. government, Department of Justice, as a member of the U.S. Muslim Brotherhood's Palestine Committee, which is Hamas in the United States. Uh, Chris pulled uh, information out of their headquarters. He pulled over 12,000 documents out of their headquarters, and one of them was their 2004 CARES 2004 Muslim platform uh, saying that they were trying to decide whether to work with Osama bin Laden or not, uh, working with groups like that. And we have right on CARES San Diego's website, they say that the zakat, the mandatory uh, giving for Muslims, that they receive 100% of it goes to uh, Fisa Bilillah which they say 
uh, in Islamic law is Islamic military operations or what our law specifically calls terrorism. So they tell you on their website they are funding terrorism. CARE San Diego, let's be clear. That is uh, uh, Hanif Mohebi, who's the executive director. These are Hamas leaders. Hamas is a designated foreign terrorist organization. And the way they intend to do it is the way they're doing it, working with the San Diego school board, working with law enforcement, working with local elected officials, working with the media. Uh, and that's, that's how they do it. Right, and, and it's, it's terrifying when you see this laid bare, when you see this exposed. And I, I want to ask in just a moment uh, what they're doing to try to stop you. But before I do that, Chris, I want to ask you, you guys at Understanding the Threat, what, what are you teaching to law enforcement? I mean, how are you trying to get this message out? Because it's one thing for us to sit here and talk about this. It's one thing for our listeners to be educated about it. But to actually put a stop to this, I mean, what are you guys doing? So first off, what we do with law enforcement is we show law enforcement how to locate, investigate, and prosecute jihadi organizations. And we start with where the enemies, uh, what the enemy is fighting for. So our enemy in this war, whether it's Al-Qaeda, the Islamic State, or the Muslim Brotherhood, which cares a part of the Muslim Brotherhood, they all say that they're waging jihad to establish an Islamic State under Sharia. Sharia is their threat doctrine. So we spend an entire day showing law enforcement not only Sharia, but how it applies to locating jihadis, investigating jihadis, and prosecuting jihadis. Then uh, we map out the jihadi network, starting at the international level, going to the national level, and then we zero in right into the community that we're actually doing the training on. So we'll do it at the local level. And on day three, now that we show law enforcement, okay, we've shown you the enemy's threat doctrine. We've shown you how they operate. We show you the network here in the United States all the way down to your local community. Now that you know this information, this is how it affects your investigations. And we walk them through how knowing this information affects their counterterrorism investigations, their vetting processes, all the way down to uh, the way they're conducting outreach in the community. And, and this stuff is all stuff you learned while you were undercover, while you were watching essentially these operatives uh, design this civilization jihad, correct? Absolutely. These suit wearing jihadis, I was working with them on Capitol Hill. I mean, you're talking about a subversive organization, Hamas, a, a designated terrorist organization operating as uh, doing business as CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations, working with legislators on Capitol Hill to affect counterterrorism policy here in the United States. Right. And like I said, I don't know another word besides terrifying, but it certainly seems to fit. John, we're almost out of time, but what, what are they doing now? I mean, you mentioned to me earlier that they are trying to stand in your way. They're trying to thwart your efforts to expose them, which I guess, given their goal is logical enough, what are they doing? Well, they try to intimidate people. So I did a, a talk Wednesday here in San Diego. I'm a Naval Academy graduate class of 1989, was invited to speak to the Alumni Association in San Diego, and uh, they had a protest uh, their national office called for the Naval Academy Alumni Association to condemn this. Uh, the media jumped on board and others jumped on board. Uh, and all it takes to defeat them in that realm is to ignore them and go forward. And once the 80 or so uh, Marine Corps and Naval officers who were in that room, retired and active duty, heard the truth and the evidence was presented, uh, they understood. And actually the Imam... Taha Hosseini uh, was in the room because one of the guys invited him in and uh, he tried to get up and disrupt. And everyone in the audience realized exactly what I had just taught over the previous 50 minutes he was doing. He wasn't interested in the facts. He was interested in shutting down the discussion because so long as the public and law enforcement and people of authority in the community don't understand the threat, that this is how they operate, then we can't defeat it. And he ended up getting dragged out by security because he was acting like a fool. And um, right. that's that just speaking truth, showing a little courage is, is simply how to, uh, to deal with these people. That, and remember, this, this is a terrorist organization right here in San Diego. Right, how to defeat them and how to expose them. John, Chris, I thank you for what you do. This is not easy work from start to finish. You are very courageous for exposing this. I appreciate it. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us.